And one of the things that you touch on that I think is so important for us to remember as SLPs or just educators or anybody working with children are ACEs. Um, so the adverse childhood experiences. And I remember learning about these, but it is one of those things, Jordan, that I just feel like is not talked about enough. So I'd love to hear from you, explain what these are and why are these important? Why should these be important to us as SLPs and educators? Okay. Um, so yeah, ACEs are um, average childhood experiences, like you said, and they're defined as traumatic experiences occurring before the age of 18. Um, and so Kaiser Permanente and the CDC, they had this um, this experiment kind of thing where they followed um, they followed kids all the way into adulthood and like continued getting more and more kids to follow. And the study conducted showed that if you had a higher A score, which is more traumatic experiences, then you're more likely to have like very serious health issues as an adult. So um, these like issues can be household dysfunction, abuse, neglect, and then community and environmental, which is kind of a really big one now because obviously our communities and environment are going through a lot, whether that be with racism or like climate change or the pandemic, like there's just so much going on. And so everybody is impacted by this. Um, and it's not just our students, it's us too. So it's something that we should be aware of. Um, but when it comes to SLPs, I think a lot of times we are aware of what's going on at home, but we don't kind of like make the transition into our therapy rooms or what our sessions are like. So I feel like we can help by like being a safe space, a support system and playing a role in fostering resilience, because that's the biggest way to like beat the kind of ACEs thing, like not come into these health um, health conditions if you foster resilience from a young age. So that's something that we can implement into our therapy all the time. I really love making like therapy functional. And so that's definitely something that they're going to need to function. Um, so just like having to foster that resilience for them. Um, and I think it's also our responsibility to refer our students to more help when it comes to like ACEs and their mental health. And if we see that there's all these things going on and we obviously can't be the only ones to help, like it's our duty to make sure that they're getting that help and advocate for them, which is what I talk about a lot. Well, and I think it's so, one of the pieces of this that I think is so very important and that you talk about is that you, it's so easy to think, well, I'm on my, I've got my SLP hat on. You come here, This we work on this, we work on this, but not realizing this is a whole child. And so what they come to school, if, when we were on site, the things that are happening in the home, that's affecting them. That's going to exactly. impact their learning and if they're available to learn. And even looking and studying in, looking more into ACEs, it really does, they've done these studies that show that it actually impacts brain development to a certain extent. Now, mm -hmm. that can be reversed, but I think what you said is so important that we have to, and you talk about this a lot too, is just looking at the whole child. And we are in a position where we have the privilege to be able to be a support system to a student who may not have another support system or has things going on that are impacting their ability to learn. So we're expecting them to come in and meet these goals and be prepared and do the work that we're asking them to do. But if all these other things are going on and that are impacting them, that's not where we need to start. We right. need to be that really strong support system to a child that may not have that support system outside of the classroom. Definitely, because how can we expect them to do anything like you're saying if they're, there's just so much other things going on? Like, I'm not worried about pronouncing this sound correctly when, like, <laughs> people are like, these things happening at home are crazy, you know? Like, and um, we need to be their support system and we can't expect them to make progress with all these other things on, on top of them. Yeah, you remember going into a home when I would do home based care and it was like, okay, dad has been deported, there's no running water in the house we're not working on speech today. Exactly. You know, it's like, what's the, <laughs> the hierarchy of what's the priority right now? So yeah, I think it's so important. And anybody listening, if you are not aware of ACEs, really and truly, and like Jordan said, right now, especially during this pandemic, we're all in that bubble of dramatic experiences right now with not even just pandemic, but like you said, with 
you know, Black Lives Matter and the racism and then climate. It, there's just the list goes on and on and on of things that are impacting all of us right now. And especially as a child who can't make sense of all that, it's even more difficult. Exactly. And I also would like to add that um, counseling is within our scope of practice. And that's that should be a part of your session, um, especially if you know that um, a kid is having these like difficulties at home. And even outside of that, we know all these difficulties that are going on worldwide. So um, it's definitely in our scope of practice and part of our job to be able to sit there and be with them and counsel them and help them get through what they're going through. And that comes before speech.